video about say repairing a Weller record a soldering iron soldering pistol by the way of the 1970s and of course they tell that the uh, say the knobs here at the output and these are that say knobs bolts uh, screw them in very tightly because uh, otherwise it doesn't work well that's completely true of course uh, anyway uh, the reason is of course that on the secondary winding here we have a quite high current and at the same time a very low voltage that's always a problem uh, say when we look at a standard automotive lead acid batteries uh, when there is a kind of corrosion on one electrode the contact resistance goes up very high and uh, when I say very high it does not have to be very high in terms of ohms resistance so we are talking uh, in the order of 0 0.0 X. when we are talking about um, contact resistance or even 0.00x and that's of course the reason why this advice was made say fasten the bolts here very very tightly to the soldering iron here they, they are going going in here and they have to be fastened very tightly. Of course that's logical. Uh, it has everything to do with the high current that's flowing in the secondary of the transformer, of the soldering transformer. And you can see it here. The very interesting thing, by the way, is that the whole uh, transformer is shielded with a piece of steel I think uh, say it's a kind of tube here and the secondary winding that's also very interesting is only one winding that goes here and here and here and then inside that uh, transformer and back again so my idea is that there cannot be more windings inside this transformer so this is the only secondary winding that takes up all the energy generated in the primary coil AC 50 Hertz and the DC measurement is 70 ohms and that's exactly the same 70 DC ohms uh, that I found in the Soldi King uh, soldering iron Soldi King the Soldi King uh, works at the same exactly the same properties so save 70 DC ohms of course on 50 Hertz that will change but anyway that's not very very important and that was more or less all to tell uh, you want to say test the wire to the mains here that gray wire it's going all along here to the two uh, switch contacts and of course they go to the primary of the transformer uh, good idea is always to use your 
DC ohms meter analog or digital or whatever and then um, at the end um, try to move the wire on and on and on and then you can see uh, whether there are say uh, tiny breaks inside that cable um, furthermore uh, there is a very there was a good interesting tiny incandescent lamp that was used to uh, light up when you push the button here the lamp had to light up the lamp was defective so I'm trying to make a, a white LED functional here and well I cannot show of course the original incandescent lamp but perhaps this is interesting to see when I push the button here this lamp lights up though it's not very fierce and it's not interesting say to um, light up the place where the soldering iron works so perhaps a fierce white lead will do the job I'm going to test that perhaps I need a, a small rectifier for that anyway of course LEDs can also work on AC though they can very very easily be damaged with AC and that's the reason why LEDs always need a constant current source etc etc but uh, for for such a very simple application there are possibilities to make this in a more easy way thanks for watching very popular brand of soldering pistols in the 1970s I could not afford it in those days uh, didn't have to uh, didn't have enough money to buy such a soldering pistol but now 2023 of course uh, this is extremely obsolete and uh, also very cheap to find and it works quite good thanks for watching pen over somewhat the bad thing of that weller was that you uh, had to lay it down on your table in this way so you could not move it up in this position uh, of course now everything falls out but anyway uh, the best thing is that you when you have a soldering iron that this position is is say the static position where you can grip that soldering iron and uh, solder things. Thanks for watching.